Hey everybody, Andy Sachs here with Coldwell Banker and the Around Town team, and I'm joined by my client and friend, Eric Egan. Good to see you. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. Appreciate you joining me. And this is something I think is, take your time to watch this one. I know most people kind of watch videos and they turn it off 30 seconds in, but this is really important. And Eric is the new uh, chair. Chair of the board of uh, the Women's Center of Greater Danbury. The Women's Center of Greater Danbury. I had no clue it existed. I had no clue what they did. I was so impressed that I actually joined the men's the men's group there that I'll have my first meeting in February, I think it is. Yes. Um, I was just blown away. Um, you, you, I think you, you kind of think that those these services exist. You don't realize where they are. And I certainly didn't realize the depth and breadth of what the Women's Center of Greater Danbury does for our entire surrounding community. So the Women's Center is our hero around town for January. Perfect. And I want to hear more about it. And again, watch this whole video and, and kind of kind of just let it sink in about the need that is out there for this service. So, um, you know, in, in the sake of that, we are a kind of a three minute video or so. Mm -hmm. Tell me the top three things the Women's Center of Danbury does. Well, let me give you the top three things that I think are most important about the Women's Center of Greater Danbury. First of all, we've we've got a mission and a vision um, that I could uh, that I could lay out for you. It sounds very legal. Bottom line of our mission is we save lives at the Women's Center. Yeah. Um, we offer services, crisis services, crisis intervention services, court advocacy, a whole range of services. All for free. All for free to women in our community. Yeah. Um, when I say community, I mean a 13 town um, circle basically around, uh, uh, around us here in Fairfield County. And I, think, um, I think that's really important to note because we're not talking about people in, you know, people in need in uh, horrible housing, right? This is Danbury, this is Bethel, this is Brookfield, Newtown, Ridgefield, I think, correct? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, th th it doesn't matter because there, there is, you know, domestic violence and all these other needs do not discriminate across race or social economic. It is fundamental need everywhere, That's abso unfortunately. That's absolutely, that is absolutely right. Um, open the papers and, and you will see that the problem of domestic and sexual violence, which is which are the two areas that the Women's Center right. focuses on, is really um, it's endemic in our in, in our culture these days. Yeah. Um, rich people, poor people, um, uh, lawyers, doctors, everybody. Yeah. We all know someone, whether whether they've told us or not, whether we cog right. we're cognizant of it. Everybody knows someone that has been touched by domestic or sexual violence. In 2019, the Women's Center alone handled 3,142 calls into its 24-hour hotline um, for people who were in need. in need of services for domestic or sexual assault. We also handled 1,570 um, uh, domestic violence um, assistance, uh, assistance to to people in uh, the court systems in in this this area, so this is not this is not a problem that happens in some other community. It right. happens in our community. Absolutely, we offer a 24-hour, 365 day a year hotline for people who have problems. Um, we offer crisis intervention, um, emergency housing for people who are um, having emergency having have an emergency crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we offer individual and and group support groups that that are, is so important to people who are are victimized. Um, court system advocacy, as I just mentioned, um, and uh, leg legislative advocacy. We we take a role in uh, promoting legislation to help yeah. people who are seeking our services. But that educational component is so important. That's part of our pre prevention goal. Yep. Um, we're not, just re, we're not just reacting to the problems. We're trying to prevent them before they happen one day. Exactly right. Um, our goal is to go into community schools, and we do, all the way from pre-kindergarten right, um, right up to seniors in high school, and frankly, uh, senior citizens in our community. And we offer educational programs in the schools. You, you, had, you had shared with me a number of how many people, or maybe, maybe it was students that you had educated in the past year. If you, if you total all of the services that we offer to, um, uh, to, to all, all persons who are interested, it's about 32,000. That's, um, that's incredible. It, it's about 22,000 of that 
uh, is um, is students in the schools. So that's a big part of what the center. It's a does. big number. Yeah, yeah it's it a, is. that's a big effort for sure. Yep. I think the critical message we're trying to get is community awareness of of the services that the center offers. Um, um, in, in terms of needs, what we have as needs, yeah. um, we always we always need donations. Of course, but we also need volunteers. We we would uh, we would really benefit and have traditionally benefited from people in the community who are interested in helping us. We have a number of committees: uh, a governance committee, a budget and finance committee, uh, a marketing committee. So people to, with to a breadth of the skill sets it, that exactly. want to. Contribute and they can contribute by joining one of our committees a yeah. uh, small contribution of time, but would be extremely helpful Yeah, um, how did you get involved in this? Um, as you know, Andy, yep. my wife and I moved here about three years ago. We moved to the Newtown area yep. um, We did so to help our daughter and son-in-law They had had a baby and needed some some health care right about that time I was retiring and my wife Jean was retiring yep. too. So we moved here for that in my past life, um, as a lawyer, I'm, I'm an attorney. Um, in my past life, I was an assistant Michigan attorney general assigned to the criminal division for part of my career. Mm. And in that career, I handled a number of domestic and sexual violence cases. And um, that instilled in me, I guess, a, a, a commitment to, to try and change our culture. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's great, you know, on a personal level, Eric, um, you got here three years ago, and you, you kind of jumped right into the, into the community. And yeah. obviously, that's, that's just kind of in you, I think. I think it's, you're not one to sit by and do nothing anyway. Absolutely but, um, not. And yeah. I, 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 guess I, just, I guess I just feel that, um, that this is a problem in our culture. Yeah. You, you read about it every day. You can't, you can't turn on the TV without this issue coming, coming yeah. at you. And uh, um, there are a number of people just like me down at the center who really want to help um, and, and try and resolve this. Yeah, it's, and it's great. It's going to be people like you that, that, that get that done. And, and really, it's a, it's a change in culture. It, the, it the, is. The it's a day. change in culture, no question. And, and um, I think a lot of what we've seen in America today is there seems to be that underswelling of changes now. Um, and, and, and it's great that you're, you're part of that at the local level. I appreciate, I appreciate your friendship. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you for joining you on my crazy podcast type of thing here. <laughs> But um, I hope you guys watched this whole thing. Um, it's, it's certainly educational and eye-opening. My name is Andy Sachs with Coldwell Banker, the Roundtown team, and we hope you learned something today. Thanks.